Now we're going to start with step 10 and adding the newsletter text. So if you look at the solution file, you'll see that the there's a drop cap here, and then we're going to have some different sections that have uh, bolded headings. We're going to make this uh, smart art and create that and this text box. And we'll put a border around the page. So we've got several things we're going to do in these final few steps. So in step number 10, it says to place the insertion point at the second blank paragraph mark below the masthead. So we're going to consider this as the masthead. This is the second paragraph mark. And I'm going to put it before the paragraph mark. It says to insert the text from the newsletter.txt. So I'm going to go to insert object, text from file. This is one of the things that you might have learned in the simulation training from Word Chapter 1 way back in the day. So we'll go to text from file. And we'll go in and find that file. It's right here. And it inserts the text automatically. So I don't have to open the file, copy it, and paste it in here. That's a really quick and easy way to do it. Then it says to correct any spelling or word usage errors. So there's several different ways that, uh, that you can do that. But let's go under the review. Um, yours might have spelling and grammar here. Mine has editor because I'm using Office 365, I believe. That's the reason for the difference. It says I have one formality issue and two for spelling. So let me get to the spelling. And there's one error that it says for surface, which is not spelled correctly. So I'm going to click on surface and correct that. And then there's a, there's not a space in between those two sentences. So I will click here and correct that. And then under formality, I know it doesn't say I'm going to go in and just check those. They're usually contractions because it doesn't think you should have a contraction in a formal document. So you can go in and select for the don't and the aren't to change those back from contractions. And oh, it finds another one. It's there, which should be they. So your version might not find all of those different types of issues, um, in particular the, uh, the ones with the contractions. If not, I would not worry about it. So I've finished reviewing those suggestions. And now we want to apply some paragraph spacing to the text of the newsletter. So I'm going to highlight all of that text. And it says to apply six point spacing after the text. Okay, so I'm going to go to my spacing after I've um, highlighted it. Go to paragraph setting and the spacing we want six point after. Okay. That's all we need to do there. So it's spaced a little more nicely in between the paragraphs. It puts a space after each paragraph. So it's a little easier to read. Oops, I didn't get that part down there, did I? Let me just highlight it all again just to make sure. And it doesn't put anything here because there's different spacing. I didn't get all of it last time. Okay, now it's six point. That should be after everything. There we go. So now it wants us to format the text into two columns. I already have it highlighted. So under the layout, just going to go to two columns. And then change all the font to Calibri. Okay. So then we'll move on to step number 11. And we're going to place the insertion point at the first blank paragraph mark before, I'm sorry, below the newsletter on the second page. So we're on the second page. It's the first blank paragraph mark here, and I'm going to put it before uh, that paragraph mark. 
then it says to insert a continuous section break. So technically, once you have inserted columns, it puts the section break before and after that. So you can see a little bit of it right here. That's the last section break. And that's telling it to put just that section into columns. So we want to go in and insert a, a continuous section break here so that we can have some other types of formatting. So if we go under layout and breaks. There's a continuous section break. Make sure you're under section breaks right there. Then we're going to go into the first numbered item. And now you can see that section break uh, show up really well right there uh, for the continuous section break we just inserted. Okay, so it also includes it before. So we want to go to the first item here, letting kids brush alone, and we want to bold that. And we're going to do the same thing for each other enumerated item. In step number 12, we're going to add a red box page border with a one point width. Okay, so in order to go to the page border, we'll go to design page border. It's going to be a box. Red, remember, is a standard color. If it's just red, it's going to be this one here. Um, otherwise, these have all kinds of little additional text for text to lighter, darker, or whatever. So it's just going to be this red standard color and a one point width. And we are going to apply it to the whole document. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to insert a smart art object under that fifth item here under the word performance. Um, it, so it says to ins place the insertion point after the fifth numbered item after the word performance. So I'm going to put it after the period there and we're going to insert a smart art object. So under the insert smart art, we're going to find which one it is. It's a process and it says it is the basic Chevron process, which should look like this one. There we go. So make sure you choose the exact one. Then we want to add our text to the uh, word art. So if you want to see what it should look like here, this is what it should look like when we're done. Okay, so we're going to add the text here. Okay, so you can add it in a couple of different ways. But the first one should be poor dental hygiene. And the second one should be cavities. And the third one should be unhappy kids. So poor dental hygiene leads to cavities, which leads to unhappy kids. Okay, so for step number 13, we're going to edit the smart art object a little bit more. So make sure the whole thing is, is selected, not just one of the shapes in between. And we want to choose a style for the smart art. So we're going to choose an inset smart art style. So if you look at how this has the kind of um, inset in the middle and the edges are raised. So if you look for, for one that looks like that, it looks kind of like this one. So hoping as I hover over that, there we go. So it's inset right there. And we're going to change the color to the colorful range, which is under colorful. Accent colors four to five, and that looks like what we needed right there. Okay, so then we're going to adjust the height of the smart art object to one. Okay, 
way. So I'm going to go under the format. The height should just be one. And the width should be three. So that is correct. Okay. So we are through with that. We're going to go to the bottom of the page after that section break and <clears throat> draw a text box so that we have this text box that says it's a publication of the National Dental Health. So let's go in and insert our shape for our text box. I'm just going to guesstimate it. It will tell us how exactly um, it, it would be in the position as well as for the height and width. So don't worry about that as much right now. So it says to adjust the height to 0.5 and the width to 7. Okay, don't worry about the position. We'll get to that in a minute. Then we're going to type the text. And make sure you don't have any typos there. And the text in the text box should be 24 point size. And it should be centered in the text box. Now, in step number 15 is where it tells us to apply the fill to the shape. And it should be blue, accent one, so you know if it's got all the extra text behind it, uh, describing exactly what um, shade it should be. It should be one of these up here. It's not going to be a standard color. So it looks like it's blue accent one, lighter 40. So I need to go in here. And we want a shadow text effect. Okay, so it's a text effect. Shadow selecting offset bottom. Okay. So you kind of have to look at these. It doesn't tell you that it's an outer, but this one will be under outer offset bottom. Okay. And then we're going to position the text box. We use that same position we've used previously. And make it negative 0.25 to the right of margin. Okay, so this needs to be margin. It's not the right margin, it's to the right of the margin. Okay, so this should be margin. And then for the vertical, it should be 1.3 below that paragraph, meaning below the paragraph there. So that should be correct. So it's 1.3 under that paragraph symbol. Okay. So that looks more like the PDF solution file. And the last thing we need to do here before we submit is go and add a drop text. So we're going to go to the first letter of the body of the paragraph, beginning with you know, as, and we're going to format that as dropped cap. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to insert, make sure you're, you are to the left of that Y. And here under the insert, there's drop cap. We're going to choose dropped. And you see it automatically knows to drop that Y in the text. It makes it nice um, to have that dropped cap. It's a nice effect. So you can see we've done quite a bit, um, not anything necessarily really complicated, but just a lot of nice uh, steps that we went through to make this look like a more professional newsletter. So the next step would be to go back into my lab IT and to Go back to your assignment and open that. You would choose the file. And
And when I'm doing this, I usually look at the time and the date just to make sure that I am uploading um, a, a file that I did just edit. Okay, so you, you would go in and uh, choose the file that you edited and upload that one. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to choose this one for the moment. Um, one thing I do want to do, make sure that you have saved it. before you upload it. <laughs> okay. All right, so let me upload that one again just to make sure. Um, I'll pull the correct one. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> now. We go back into this window, make sure I've saved it and I'm uploading the most recent copy. And sometimes it's easy to upload the wrong version, um, but that's okay. You have multiple attempts so that you can go in and uh, upload it again if needed. Okay, so you've got your your file uploaded, you'll submit it for grading. I'll close that. And it may not up, um, update this one immediately um, as far as the number of attempts and everything, but you can go under view, view submissions. And it does tell me that I got a perfect score on this one. Um, if I did not get a perfect score, you would go in to that submission and you can filter it by incorrect only if you would like. And it will give you the uh, drop down and will tell you what is incorrect. Okay. So then I would go back into the file that I uploaded, the one that I had completed. You do not have to start all over. Go back into that file, edit your uh, document. And then when you think you've gotten everything um, corrected, then go back in here. And I'll just go through those steps again, choose the file, upload the file, submit for grading, and then go back in here, view your submissions, and then view the rubric. I'm gonna go back into this one and see if, it, if there was anything else that's incorrect. Sometimes if you have a lot of errors, I would suggest correcting a couple of the, the minor errors first and then re-uploading it, see if it corrects those and then correct the next ones just so that you, for some reason, you know, you might go back in and, and correct something and it creates more errors. Um, not usually, but just in case I try to correct a couple at a time if I've got multiple errors. Notice here, if you, for some reason, lose your file, if you have uploaded it to my lab IT, you can download the file that you submitted so that you can go in and edit that file um, and correct it and upload it again. Okay, so that is how you complete a capstone assi assignment in my lab IT. Technically, the badge projects are also the same as far as um, completing those. So if you have any questions, please let me know.